Hello and welcome to History at Home. Today I want to show you what I've found out about one of my ancestors and then I want to take you for a little tiki tour to Opaho where I'm going to try to find traces of his and his family's lives. This is a story about my great-great-grandfather Farquharson from Balna Badok. To tell the story I found portraits of my great-great-grandparents in the Tuitu Otago Settlers Museum archives. These had the year they arrived in Dunedin. I knew that boat they came on and I knew stories my mother had shared with me when I was a child. I knew that they came from Aberdeen. The treasure I found in the big old desk in my family home was a Farquharson family tree which began with a gentleman called <coughs> James I of Inveray, born in 1585. I quite liked the sound of that. He sounded almost like a king. At the bottom I found my grandfather Frank Bruff's name so I knew I was on the right track. It took me a while to find Balnabadok on the internet, as it wasn't the name of a place or town, but of an estate that my family used to own. Balnabadok was owned by my great-great-great-grandfather, George Farquharson. My great-great-grandfather, James, was born in 1841, the younger brother of Francis, who was five years old when my great-great-grandfather was born. George the father died in 1841 also, leaving Francis to inherit the estate when he came of age. Balna Badoc was an estate of around 500 acres in the Scottish Highlands near the village of Strathton in the province of Aberdeenshire, Scotland. James grew up in, on the farm knowing that the estate would be inherited by his older brother in that he would eventually have to leave farming life in Balna Badoc. I get the impression that James was determined to farm and that he didn't like want to play second fiddle to anyone. So in 1882, at the grand old age of 22, he received money from his father's estate. Married his sweetheart Janet McGregor and left Scotland to seek land in the new settlement of New Edinburgh. They sailed on a ship called the Wave Queen, bound for Dunedin. To buy his own land would have been virtually impossible had he stayed in Scotland. The new land offered more land at a much lower price, but there was a, another prices to pay. You would probably never again see your family or homeland. They arrived in Dunedin smack bang in the height of the Otago Gold Rush. James, not the sort to miss an opportunity, first tried his luck on the gold fields in central Otago. This venture was unsuccessful. He then spent 18 months working on Otago farms, learning about the climate, seasons and what farming practice looked like in this new land. He then bought 80 acres of farmland up North East Valley called Maybank, where he farmed for five years. Janet had three bairns between 1864 and 1870, George, Helen and Francis. Around 1870 he bought 500 acres of land on Signal Hill where he lived and worked for the next 50 years, laird of the land. Now let's take a COVID Level 3 tiki tour to see if great-great-grandfather Farquharson left his mark on the landscape. So this is Maybank Street. Now was this the place that great-great-grandfather Farquharson had his first farm? Looking over the hills to the city, was it here that he had to clear the, clear the, the trees and build a um, little farmhouse and live with his one child and wife? And here is Farquharson Street. Driving up here, past Black's Road, is another reason why Opaho is so important to my family because further up Signal Hill Road is 105 Signal Hill Road where my mother grew up. Welcome to the Farquharson's old farm and up behind me you can see some of the original farm buildings all built out of natural stone found on the farm. And beyond the trees is the original house. Over 150 years old, these buildings. Mm -hmm. 
And the story goes is that great great grandfather Farquharson used to hold Highland Games up here on, on this property, you know, tossing the caber and various other Highland sports. So looking down here, you can see down into Dunedin and imagine over the 50 years that Farquharson farmed this area, the changes that he would have seen or the reclamation, turning of Lake Logan into Logan Park. South Dunedin would have all been tidal mudflat. The building of the railway out to Port Chalmers. The tiny, <laughs> tiny township growing and growing in the 50 years that he farmed this area. And here lies James and Janet and various other family members, including Alexander Farquharson, who went to the Boer War. As is so often the case in the 1800s, it's much harder to find information about the women than the men. Janet Farquharson died in 1878, aged 37. She had married, sailed to New Zealand and had eight children. In 1873, she had her fifth child, a daughter, Agnes Octoloni, who was my great-grandmother. So a widower at age 37, James Farkson brought up his eight children, farmed his land, was a Justice of the Peace, Mayor of North East Valley, was on the North East Valley School Committee, on the Signal Hill Road Board, was a lifelong ranger for the Acclimatisation Society, and a right honourable master of the Masonic Lodge. I don't know what he did in his spare time. This is a special presentation given to great-great-grandfather Farquharson to thank him for his contribution to the borough of North East Valley. I found this in the Toitua Otago Settlers Museum archive. His youngest son William became an Otago Hussar and served in the Boer War in the second South African contingent. Another son Arthur was the New Zealand champion lightweight boxer. And this is his daughter Agnes Octoloni who married William Bruff. These guys are my grandfather's parents. Their son Frank Bruff was my grandfather. He's the wee laddie, pictured here on the right. So great-great-grandfather Farquharson had quite a story to tell. He was one tough old rooster. Thank you for watching History at Home. Have a look around your house and see what you can find that tells you about who you are and who your ancestors were.